Good evening. I'm Nancy Oweiler, and I have three messages for you tonight. Prices matter in our economy and our lives, but our economy needs help from government and support from you to get those prices right. We must, and more importantly, we can substitute less polluting energy sources for more damaging ones. Pricing carbon and pollution can help speed a transition to a low carbon economy by leveling the playing field between fuel types, substituting investment in clean technology, creating jobs, and have Canada show leadership in reducing its GHG emissions, as Velma and Chad have said. Our economy handles billions of transactions a day. Its ability to do this well requires prices to signal scarcity. Every day we make dozens of decisions on what we're going to do based on prices. When I go to the grocery store and I'm buying vegetables, if bok choy is more expensive than broccoli, I actually like both of them, I'll buy bok choy. Scarcity is a key part of what drives prices. What's scarce now is not our fossil fuels, but our natural environment and its ability to absorb the pollutants we pour into it every day. Why aren't we getting those prices and that scarcity into our prices and dealing with the things that degrade our environment? Simple. Without the force of laws that require inclusion of environmental impacts into the cost of producing and consuming goods and services, we'll continue to dump our waste products into our atmosphere, on our land, and into our water. Why pay for something if you can get it for free? But there's nothing free anymore. Our planet depends on us taking action to get off our high carbon diet, stop the free riding, get going, and help the planet regain its health. Can we think about energy the same way we think about bok choy? Most people don't put the two of them together. Sure, how do we do that? We put a price on carbon and other pollutants. BC's carbon tax is a great start. Ontario, Quebec, California, China, Korea have all created markets that price carbon. Naysayers argue that people and businesses won't or can't respond to higher prices of fossil fuels. They won't get out of their cars, they won't look for energy-saving technologies, but the evidence suggests otherwise. Some examples. We can be proud of this first one. British Columbians own more hybrid cars per capita than any other province in Canada. Think about driving a vehicle. It costs a lot of money. Car insurance, car payments, gasoline, depreciation. I know, I gave up my car three years ago, and now I can help my kids pay their mortgage. Some will say, well, Nancy, I live in Williams Lake. I need my truck for my job. I can't get along without it. Fair enough. You won't be able to adjust as quickly as I can. But if the market provides fuel-efficient vehicles, then you start to have a choice. You have the means to reduce your costs. And good policy, like our carbon tax, with its offsets in form of lowering taxes and providing support for those who find it more difficult to make the adjustment, is the way to get going. And the entire way we're getting around is changing. Car sharing, self-driving cars, ride sharing. Are we going to need the same number of vehicles we've had in the past? I don't think so. So are we waiting? What are we doing? Are we getting ready for this or not? Businesses. Over 400 large companies worldwide are pricing carbon in their business decisions to account for risk, to determine what new investments they'll make, and to the open the door to new business opportunities. Who are these companies? Let me just give you a sample. Canadian Tire, beloved Canadian Tire. Walt Disney, Nestle, most major oil companies, including Suncor, Enbridge, and Exxon. Black & Decker, Google, TD Bank, General Motors, Tech, the list goes on and on. These companies know the value of pricing a scarce resource when making decisions. Listen to Walt Disney, not Walt himself, he's gone, but his company. Our businesses have an incentive to reduce their GHG emissions and think creatively about new approaches and technologies that will help produce our carbon footprint. Disney Enterprises is a $174 billion high-tech company that can buy a lot of high, low-carbon high-tech technology. Exxon. We require all our businesses to include an estimate of GHG emission costs 
while seeking funding for new capital investment. These companies, in most cases, are voluntarily pricing carbon. They know pricing carbon is smart business, one that prepares them for the future. A survey by Ernst & Young of 100, again, large corporations, found that 78% said carbon pricing would be a positive stimulus to innovation. 81% said it fosters green growth. And surprising to some people, 50% said it would improve competitiveness, not kill it. Carbon pricing can contain, create stronger incentives to drive down costs and in do so stimulate other businesses. FedEx, world's largest transportation uh, carrier, Fast Goods, achieved a 22% increase in fuel efficiency in just five years by working with manufacturers, universities, and clean tech innovators to reduce their fuel use. More efficient diesel, yes, we're still going to need diesel and other gasoline products as we make the transition, developing hybrids and using, and developing electric vehicles. This was without a carbon price. Think what they could have done with one to help stimulate that kind of investment. Leveling the playing field by pricing carbon means it substitutes in producing energy that you've heard. Wind, solar, photovoltaic are better able to compete with fossil fuels. This drives innovation and investment. The fastest growth in new energy investment in 2014 was renewables. 65 percent of all new capacity investment in that year was renewable energy sources. Over the next five years, those costs are going to come down even more. Solar, solar photovoltaic came down 80 percent from 20 2008 to 2012, and it's expected to fall another 40 percent in the next few years. As Chad suggested, we're also developing better and cheaper means to store and reuse carbon dioxide. What's driving this? Pricing and regulations are help. One form of pricing that we need to have less of are subsidies. The true cost of a good is hidden when we subsidize it. And getting rid of the subsidies to consumers and producers around the world of fossil fuels would reduce global GHG emissions by up to 13%. That gets us well on the road to what Velma was talking about in the Copenhagen Accord. Prices aren't the only nudge, don't get me wrong. I also favor and think we have to deal with regulations that complement it, but prices grease the wheels. Regulations such as zero emission vehicle targets, low carbon fuel standards, and better building codes are also vital. But the prices have to be there, too, to stimulate and hasten the transition. All energy sources have environmental impacts, but we can and must substitute the less environmentally damaging ones for the ones that are more environmentally damaging. We're waking up to the message. By mid-2015, 39 countries had a price on carbon. But do not underestimate the challenge. With continued economic development, we must do better and reduce the absolute levels of carbon-intensive fuel as we transi transition to a less damaging type of energy use. I've heard all the excuses. Why should I pay for carbon when Canada is such a tiny country? Our share of GHGs is small. We can't act till other countries do. Dealing with climate change is too costly for the economy. They don't work anymore. Those arguments don't work anymore. The evidence is to the contrary. We have to use pricing and regulations to help our economy thrive as new investment and innovation, with new investment and innovation, reduce the risk of the catastrophe that we may be facing. Scarcity spurs innovation and change. If we didn't, if it didn't, we'd still have manure in the streets. Which path depends on actions we take today? My plea to you and to government is don't be afraid. Help us get on the right path. Speed up the transition to a lower carbon world by pricing carbon as an accompaniment to other regulatory policies. Help sustain our planet's ability to maintain and protect our ecosystems and therefore all of us. Thank you.